I've been playing Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door for 16 years, and honestly, it's gotten way too easy. I just blast through the enemies and beat the game super easily. So that's why I decided to finally fix it. I did this by doubling all enemies' health and damage. I also gave all normal enemies one extra defense, and all bosses get two extra defense. I also gave myself a few restrictions. During this challenge, I gained some new knowledge of the game and even learned about some strategies that I'd never heard about before. I name our save file based on what I think I'll be feeling after the end of this challenge, and then begin my journey through Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Hard Mode. After arriving in Rogueport, we are only able to take 10 steps before being interrupted by the most frequent boss in the game, Lord Crump. Our first battle against him is usually unlosable in a normal playthrough, but with his doubled stats and two defense, he is untouchable. Neither our jumps nor hammer attacks can deal damage to him, which really shows how annoying challenges like this can be in the early game. Thankfully, there is still one way we can deal damage to him. This game has these things called action commands, which is basically doing specific button inputs during battle to gain more damage or to take less damage. And the most powerful of these is the super guard. Super guarding involves hitting B within three frames of when you would take damage. Doing so makes you block all damage, but the part that we care about right now is that it also deals one damage back to the enemy, no matter the defense. This means that by landing 10 super guards, we can deal enough damage to defeat Lord Crump. We add Goombella to our party and then head to the sewers where we have to fight a trio of Goombas. Most of these early game fights involve Mario attacking with his hammer, since both his jump and Goombella's head bonk can't get through the game wide defense buff. Even with the buff however, flying enemies can still have their wings taken from them by a jump attack. We use Goombella to knock down the Paragoomba and then hammer them all down with Mario. After we defeat them, we find the Thousand Year Door and unlock the special ability Sweet Treat, which will keep us healthy throughout this entire playthrough. We emerge from the sewers to buy some flowers and get the Power Smash badge, only to immediately go back into the sewers and find the big bad blooper. This fight consists of his body, a tentacle on the ground, and a tentacle floating in the air. The fight only ends when its main body is defeated, but we can't target the body until both tentacles are defeated. But we can't defeat the tentacles because the airborne one has too much defense, which means we'll never hit the body, which means we'll never beat the fight. Except we brought some flowers. Fire flowers, which we bought four of, deal three damage to all enemies and pierce through enemy defense. By using a fire flower with both Mario and Goombella, we can do six damage to both tentacles, knocking them away, causing Blooper to fall, and making it vulnerable to our attacks. We power smash it for a few turns until it decides to go back to the ceiling, fire flower it again, knocking it down before power smashing one more time to finish the fight. Chapter 1 has some tough fights if you run in unprepared, so I spend almost all of my money on more fire flowers and then head towards the first boss. On the way, we defeat both the clefts and the bristles, and we win a game show to gain access to the Schwank Fortress. Our first fight is against a group of four fuzzies. This fight would be incredibly hard, except we brought more flowers. Fuzzies have 6 HP, which is the perfect amount for a double fire flower. Then we have to do the exact same fight again. But then as we're leaving Schwank Fortress, we hit the 1 in 8,000 chance to find a shiny. No, I killed it! Okay, but actually this fight isn't too hard. Goombella did die at one point, but it was a calculated loss to let Mario finish the fight with some power smashes. The only real problem is that Mario can't power smash Goldie while the horde is there. But by super guarding and using a fire flower, we can defeat Goldie without having to deal with the horde. On our way to fight the boss of this chapter, we run into Koops. While he isn't one of the best partners in this challenge, he is at least more useful than Goombella right now since he can actually deal damage to enemies. We defeat Redbones and his crew with all the fire flowers we bought earlier, having to use four of them to actually win this fight. On our way to Hooktail, we pick up Power Bounce and another badge that made my attacks go... With these new badges equipped, we enter into battle against the chapter boss, Hooktail. Hooktail has a whopping 10 attack, 3 defense, and 40 HP. This fight is a drastic increase in difficulty. But thankfully, Hooktail has one weakness. Every time she hears a cricket, her attack and defense lower by one. So we can combine our cricket badge with power bounce and make her hear that sound a lot. After we lower her defense, I hammer away at her health with Koop supporting the entire time. After dropping her to 0 HP, she attempts to bribe us with everything we could ever want, offering us money, power, and even feet. Wait. 
Whoa, 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 wait, no, 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 I didn't, I didn't want that, I didn't want that. Anyway, this game is really ahead of its time. After miraculously keeping the game's E rating, Hooktail eats the audience and heals back to 10 HP. But this doesn't change anything else, so we just do the exact same thing. Ending Chapter 1 and unlocking our first special attack, Earth Tremor. After beating Chapter 1 with zero issues, we upgrade Goombella and head to Chapter 2. We reach the Great Bogley Tree and find out the entrance is blocked, but Little Man here tells us that there's a secret entrance somewhere, but we can't find it without getting some help from some wind spirit named Flurry. On our way to find her, we pick up the Quake Hammer, which gives us an attack that causes an earthquake, dealing damage to all grounded enemies. It also has a high chance to knock pieces off of the stage, either dealing damage to Mario or the enemies. We find Flurry, but apparently she can't go out until she completes her outfit with a stolen necklace. So we run back to the start of the chapter where we find our first battle against the Shadow Sirens, Vivian, Marilyn, and Beldum. This fight is a pretty big jump in difficulty this early on, but we do have a secret weapon. After defeating Hooktail, I went and found the badge Mega Rush P. This badge increases the damage of your partner by 5, but only if they are at 1 HP. With this insane damage increase, Goombella is able to use her new multi-bonk attack to deal 18 damage to Vivian, and then I finish her off with a power smash. Then I get lucky, and both Marilyn and Beldum attack Mario, giving Goombella another free chance to bonk Marilyn for 18 damage, and then I finish her off with an Earth Tremor. Beldum makes the mistake of thinking that Mario is the main character of this fight, making him tiny and decreasing his damage by two. But we know who the real star of the show is. After one more bonk, we win the fight, take back the necklace and head back to Flurry's house. I'm really excited to see what this outfit was that the necklace complimented so much. I mean, it sounds like the outfit was pretty much incomplete without it. Oh, the necklace is the outfit. After we upgrade her, she gets Lip Lock, which is a piercing attack that also drains the enemy's health. This makes it the only attack that we have that can deal with the chapter two boss, Magnus Von Grapple. Now I know what you're thinking, why not use Goombella for the peril strats again? Well, for one, I wanted to show off Flurry, but second, I don't know if I could reliably keep Goombella alive in this fight. Magnus Von Grapple has 60 health and 3 defense, but his attacks are pretty simple. He either uses a stomp attack or shoots out his fists and starts attacking with an earthquake instead. Anytime he shoots out the fists, we can easily earth tremor them before they attack. This leaves Crump exposed for a flurry of lip locks. His stomp attack is really easy to super guard, and he only ever used his earthquake once in this fight, so it was very easy to defeat him in the end. We end this fight with barely a scratch and unlock Clock Out, a special ability which stuns enemies for a few turns. Oh yeah, we also got a jump attack upgrade for Mario in this chapter, but honestly it doesn't really do that much. Before ending this section, I wanted to quickly mention a boss that while technically optional, would be really annoying to deal with if we didn't beat him right now. This fight's really simple. I use my newly acquired clock out to freeze Gus and then send Flurry to kiss him a bunch. But yeah, this fight is nothing, but I thought I should mention it. This chapter is all about battling and has the most required fights out of any chapter at a staggering 22. I won't bore you with all the details of every battle, so here are the highlights. We super guard all of the Goombas, Quake Hammer the Koopas, Hammer the Pokies, Earth Tremor the Dole Bones, and then Quake Hammer again to defeat Spike Storm. Oh yeah, and we find this little egg outside. We stun the bandits for an easy kill, Quake Hammer the Hyperclefs, Earth Tremor the Bogly Boys, and straight up murder the bob -Oms. With a solid 32 deaths on our hands, we reach the halfway point and have to fight the Iron Clefts. And then I run away. Yeah, there's no way to beat these guys first try. They literally have infinite defense, and the only thing that can break through that defense is themselves. But it just so happens that we already have exactly what we need. A little red Yoshi appears, that we lovingly name Amsa, after the most important red Yoshi in history. Before doing anything else, I go upgrade him to increase his health for the fight that he's about to carry. Amsa has the move Gulp which swallows an enemy and spits them back at the enemy behind them. Using this attack on the clefts allows us to use one to damage the other. And with some well-timed super guards, we can close out a clean victory. Continuing on, we earth tremor the spinies, quake some bristles, and unlock the super hammer. We stun the bloopas and attack them with Amsa's new attacks. And just as we're about to start climbing the ladder again, we get interrupted by our next fight, the iron clefts. Again? Yeah, these guys are kind of sore losers. 
but this fight is the exact same as the first fight. So let's just gulp them again and continue on. Okay, so I may have missed a super guard and lost Amsa. Thankfully, we don't have to win this fight to continue, so I guess let's just run and keep going. Continuing on, we hammer down the fuzzies and gulp the magic koopas, and we are interrupted again by the biggest sore loser in Mario history. Bowser has 60 HP and a few different attacks that he throws at us, but none of these attacks can deal enough damage to kill us in one or even two hits, so I'm not really that scared. I use Lip Lock to deal most of the damage, while keeping Mario safely in the back, swapping between Clock Out and Sweet Treat, and using Hammer Attacks when neither was available. After randomly having been stopped on our climb yet again, we continue on. Apparently Gus is back and with a vengeance, but he's basically the exact same fight, so he goes down the exact same way as before. We gulp the red chain chomps, bonk the Koopa Bros, and barely scrape by with a win against Dark Koopa Troll with a really clutch Gale Force, a move that has a chance to blow enemies out of the fight. This leaves us with one last fight in this arena, but before we do that, I take a quick shopping trip to prepare for the battle, and then I head back in to fight the champion of the arena, Rockhawk. Apparently I failed second grade math, because I now know if you double 40, you get 100. Rockhawk has a few attacks that he can use. He can use a slide kick, a double flip, or a flying press. None of these attacks are too difficult to super guard, so I'm not that worried. My strategy in this fight is to get our FP down to 1 by using Mario and Goombella's FP moves. Because with the point swap that I bought right before this battle, you can swap either you or your partner's HP with your FP. This allows us to get Goombella down to 1 health, giving us back the insane damage that we've been missing with Peril Strats. We conveniently leave him at 21 health, which is 1 HP above when he would normally start going into the rafters and making the fight really annoying. With one last multibonk, we end the fight and become champions of the arena. You would think that Rockhawk was the final boss of this chapter, but there is actually another, much scarier boss, Macho Grubba. This fight is the biggest spike to difficulty in the game in my opinion, since Grubba can double his turn count, increase his attack and defense, and just make himself harder to hit. With a whopping 120 health, this fight will take at least 6 turns even with Goombella's big damage buff. Starting off the battle, we multibonk and then switch Goombella out so she doesn't die to one of Grubba's attacks. What I forgot about is that Grubba will always spend his turn giving himself the buff that gives himself 2 turns if he doesn't already have that buff, which means that I just wasted Mario's turn, and also have to waste his next one to bring Goombella back out. I miss an easy super guard and lose my highest damage dealer. This snowballs the battle in Grubba's favor, because I have to slow down my damage output by switching to Amsa and Flurry. After dealing some damage with Flurry's lip locks, Grubba starts using some different attacks that I genuinely have never seen before because I usually just kill him too fast. Even with these new attacks, I'm able to keep myself healthy by using Sweet Treat and consistently using Flurry and Amsa to deal damage and slowly chip away at his health. After a long battle, Mario gets down to 1 HP, and I realize that I just don't stand a chance after losing my ace. But in this darkness, I notice my saving grace. A shine bingo. Battles in this game have this bingo mechanic, where after doing a successful action command, you can roll one of five options, and if you get two in a row, you can play a mini game to try to fill the third slot correctly. Each type of slot does what you would expect, but the best is of course, the shine with it completely refreshing all of your stats. So with 1 HP and a dream, I hit a Quake Hammer to play the mini game and try to get all of my health back. You've gotta be kidding me. So remember that little thing I said earlier when I got the Quake Hammer? It also has a high chance to knock pieces off of the stage, either dealing damage to Mario or the enemies. So after tragically dying, we restart the fight and I kind of just destroy him. With new knowledge gained from our first battle, I go in with a new strategy. I have Goombella multi-bonk him, and then I clock out Grubba. This gives Goombella three more turns to freely bonk Grubba, getting him down to 40 HP. I switch her out, and forget again that Grubba will always use his turn to gain the double actions buff if he doesn't have it. Thankfully, that didn't matter in the end, since Grubba was two multi-bonks away from death. I swapped Goombella back in, super guarded his backflip, and then ended the fight with two more bonks. Winning this battle unlocks the special ability Power Lift, which is the best special in the game, letting us buff the two active party members with anywhere from one attack and defense up to five. Nothing else happens between chapters, so let's move right on to chapter four. 
After arriving in Twilight Town, we immediately beeline our way to the Creepy Steeple, which is where all three of the boss fights we will be doing are. The first of which being Atomic Boo. This boss is actually completely optional and only drops a subpar badge, but I felt like it was in the spirit of the challenge to fight every boss that we could. This boss can be scary, with it being able to attack both Mario and his partner simultaneously for some pretty hefty damage. But with the help of Power Lift, we can buff our stats and use Goombella's Multibonk to quickly defeat him, basically without problem. After defeating Atomic Boo, we climb up a big staircase and find the final boss of the chapter, Do Huh, that's weird. The final boss of the chapter, Do I guess his name goes against YouTube TOS or something. We begin this battle unable to get through his defense, and I honestly can't remember if this is a scripted part of the game or we just weren't dealing enough damage. Regardless, I was able to pierce his defense with a lip lock from Flurry, and he immediately realized that he had to change up his look to get with the ladies. So he stole my look. Being very upset with this, I power lift Goombella and just multi-bonk away at this guy. He goes down way easier than either Grubba or even Rockhawk. It's kind of weird that the Chapter 4 boss is just this much easier than the Chapter 3 bosses. And yeah, we're done with Chapter 4. Oh wait, what? Oh, he stole my body. And my friends. And my name? We run back to Twilight Town and find Vivian, one of the Shadow Sirens from earlier. Apparently her sisters have been bullying her, so we try to cheer her up, and after doing so, she decides to help us get our identity back. We run back into Do and he tells us that if we can say his name, he will give us our body back. Sadly, even though I know his name from playing the game previously, I can't tell it to him because he stole the letter P from my keyboard, which is essential to spelling his name. <sighs> So I take a trip back to the creepy steeple to find a chest full of pee, then return to Duplis to tell him his name. But he decides that lying is okay and runs back to the steeple without giving me my name back. So after running all the way back to the steeple, we run back up the staircase, get some inspiration from tall Vivian, and begin our fight against Duplis. This fight starts with just us, as Vivian begins feeling like she's betraying her sister helping Mario. On our first turn, we use a Bushi, which makes us invulnerable until Vivian decides to come back because she likes us more than her family, and she fully joins our party. We use Power Lift to increase our stats, but get really unlucky and only get a plus one to damage. Thankfully, this is one of the easiest bosses in the game, even with the rest of our party fighting us. Duplis and Goombella's jump attacks are very easy to super guard, and while his hammer attack is a bit more annoying to guard, we can consistently swap between attacking, healing, and stunning with clock out to slowly whittle down his health. After some powered up jumps and Vivian giving him the old 1-2, we defeat Duplis and unlock our newest special move, Art Attack. Before starting Chapter 5, we go upgrade Vivian, giving her the attack Fiery Jinx, which is a very powerful AoE attack. We also find Dazzle and trade in some star pieces for the Quick Change Badge and a Power Plus P. Starting Chapter 5, we get on a boat and then immediately get jumped. We crash land, and after hanging out on this island for a bit, we have two identical fights against some fiery guys. Both of these fights are easily won by using a power shell and an art attack to deal the 16 damage necessary. After defeating the second set of fire guys, we add Admiral Bobbery to the team. And while he doesn't have many attacks that are useful to this challenge, he does have one that I use on the final boss to completely skip one of its phases. Since the rest of the chapter is kind of uneventful, let's just skip to the boss of the chapter. Cortez has three separate phases, each having 20 HP, but doubling that shouldn't be that much of an issue because, I mean, 20 doubled is... 120? What? But even with this insanely massive health bar, I think we can still beat him first try. We start the fight by immediately power lifting Goombella and start the multibonk train. The worry of this fight is losing Goombella super early like we did against Macho Grubba, but we now have a new secret weapon on our side. Quick change. This badge lets us switch between partners as much as we want in a turn. So by attacking with our powerful partners, we can then switch into our high health partners before the turn ends, keeping our glass cannon safe while dishing out the same damage as normal. 
This also has the added benefit of stopping the timer on our partner's buffs, since it only goes down while they're active at the end of the turn. By using this strategy of multi-bonking and then switching out, we defeat his first phase while keeping healthy with Sweet Treat. In this form, he can be shrunk down by hitting his pile of bones, and after doing this twice, he opens up his rib cage, exposing his weak point. This gem takes two more damage from all attacks. Partway through this phase, I powerlift Vivian in preparation for his final phase. Goombella then finishes phase two with a few more multi-bonks, and we move on to phase three. This last phase has Cortez as a floating head, with his four weapons becoming their own separate enemies. This is where Vivian and her fiery jinx come in. Each of these weapons has eight health, but with the help of that power lift we did, we are able to do 10 damage with Vivian's fiery jinx. They do get back up every two turns, but with our ability to prolong our buffs, Vivian just keeps knocking them down every time they come up, over and over and over again. Once Cortez falls to half HP, he decides to consume the souls of my adoring fans to heal himself. But he's only prolonging the inevitable. After a few more fiery jinxes, Cortez falls after almost 40 minutes real time. Hey, so uh, editor me here. I thought I'd just drop you with a little knowledge bomb. Apparently you can use Flurry's Gale Force to blow away the weapons permanently. Me not using this information didn't change the fight at all, but I thought that if I didn't know this little fact, then there's probably a lot of y'all that didn't know, so I thought I'd just mention it. While technically we're done with chapter 5, there is one more fight we have to do before chapter 6. Our third fight against, you guessed it, Lord Crump. Crump has 60 HP and a few of his ex not lackeys to help him out. We use the same strategy that we used against Cortez by multi-bonking with Goombella and swapping her in and out to keep her safe. So after multi-bonking Crump a few times, we get him down to 0 HP and then he runs off the stage, fully healing and beginning phase 2, where he gets like at least 3 guys to help him. I mean, what do you expect from me? I did fail second grade math after all. This phase is the exact same in terms of what Lord Crump does, but all of these x knots will form a giant ball that will hit both Mario and his partner, and is the only attack in the game that has two different super guard timings for both Mario and his partner. It is the hardest attack to super guard. Even with this cheating move, we multi-bonk him down to 2 HP and then get to finish him off with a spin jump from Mario. Before starting Chapter 6, we go on a little journey to unlock Tier 2 partner upgrades and also to unlock our last partner, Miss Mouse. Miss Mouse is widely regarded as the worst partner in the game, so she's not getting used in this challenge. Chapter 6 has almost no battles. You get on train, solve mystery, find ghost, sleep, wake up, get off train, Buy new shoes, like and subscribe, get back on the train, sleep again, wake up, and then you finally get to the interesting part of this chapter. The battle against the Smorg. We do this fight pretty similarly to how we did the last phase of the Cortez fight, with us using Vivian to destroy all three of its arms at once, revealing the weak spot of the Smorg. The main difference between this fight and the Cortez fight is that during the Cortez fight, the weapons were never able to attack us because they didn't get to attack until the turn after they respawned. The Smorg, however, gets to attack with all three of its tentacles as soon as they respawn. This makes the fight a lot scarier because we have to deal with three attacks every couple turns. But with some well-timed super guards, we can get through phase one no problem. The real problem comes from phase two, where he leaves behind his three arms to form a giant Lego hand that deals 20 damage with each attack. We only have 20 health. We can still knock it down for a couple turns, but it getting to attack at all is terrifying. To keep myself from dying in this phase, I knock down the arm and then use Koops' shell shield to prepare for its next attack. After doing that, the arm is still down for one more turn, so I pull out one of my high single target damage dealers and start wailing away. I continue this until it's about to die and then I finish it off with an Earth Tremor, completing the only mandatory fight in Chapter 6. After defeating Smorg, we finally get off the train for good, and we run to get the Crystal Star. But before we grab the star, we take a quick pit stop to get the most important badge in the game. We drop down and grab our sixth Crystal Star, which gives us the special move Showstopper. 
This move doesn't affect bosses, but it is basically a free win against any non-boss enemy, so we won't have to talk about any of those battles past this point. Starting chapter 7, we grab the Ultra Hammer and find out that we need to go to the moon. We do this in the stupidest way possible, with a giant cannon. We get shot to the moon and find the x Not secret moon base, and then quickly skip through it all to get a feeling fine badge for both my partner and me, which will be useful later. With no more battles to get in our way, we head directly to the boss of the chapter, Magnus Von Grapple version 2. Lord Crump has gotten a lot of upgrades to his mech suit since our first battle, with over twice as much health, three times the damage, and some brand new attacks. His new Magnus Drill attack looks like it should be really difficult to superguard, but apparently I got really good at superguarding it because I didn't miss a single one in this fight. He is still able to shoot out his rocket hands, but Vivian can make quick work of that now that we have her on the team. Nothing in this fight is too dangerous, and we can basically just do what we've done in the last few fights. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The one danger of this fight is that when Crump gets to lower HP, he sucks in the audience and then spits them out at you, dealing 6 damage 10 times. This could be a run killer, but thankfully he only attacks the party member in the front. I put Mario in the back and use my patented quick change strategy to deal damage. Two of my partners go down in this fight, but it was mandatory to keep Mario alive. After attacking a few more times, we eventually bring Magnus Von Grapple's HP down to zero. After getting off the moon, we go buy a couple sleepy sheep, upgrade our last few partners, and then head towards our last set of challenges. The Thousand Year Door. This is our hardest challenge yet with five bosses that will easily defeat us if we don't go in with a plan. I make my way to this courtyard, which is necessary for all of my plans. This room has two battles against Chain Chomps, one of which having three in it. By equipping two Defense Up Peas, I can make these Chain Chomps only deal 10 damage with their attacks. By entering the fight with either Goombella or Amsa, I can let the first two Chomps do a full 10 damage and then normal guard the last attack, leaving both of them at 1 HP. Going towards our first battle, I equip both Feeling Fine badges from earlier and begin my face-off against Gloomtail. Gloomtail is pretty similar to his younger sister, with him having both a Poison Breath attack and a Stomp attack, but he also adds a Chomp and a big Piercing Earthquake as well. We start this battle by Rally Winking with Goombella, giving Mario two actions. Using these two turns, I powerlift Amsa and then put him away to keep him safe for the following turns. I take a pretty big hit from Gloomtail's breath attack, but push through and begin my onslaught with Amsa. Every time Mario gets low, I try to throw in a sweet feast to keep him alive. I shouldn't have enough star power to keep using a 5 cost move like this, but thanks to Amsa being in peril, I get double the star power I normally would, and getting even more when Mario is low health. I continue on, easily superguarding all of his stomp attacks, and continue to wail away at him. After a few turns, Gloomtail uses his Earthquake, which pierces defense and deals 20 damage. This attack can just straight up one-shot us, and is probably the actual hardest attack in the game to superguard. But I do it anyway. After this insane superguard, I have Amsa attack one more time, and then Gloomtail starts charging up for his strongest attack, his Mega Breath. This attack deals 24 damage and is also a pain to superguard, but thankfully we don't have to. Since him charging means that he's going to use the Mega Breath next turn, I switch to Vivian and use Veil, a move that makes both Vivian and Mario intangible until the next turn. We use this to completely dodge the Mega Breath, and after reappearing, I switch Vivian out, just to make sure that she doesn't die in case I need her again. I continue attacking with Amza, dodging another Mega Breath with Vivian and taking the full force of a normal Breath attack. But with one final Egg Toss from Amza, we defeat Gloomtail, allowing us to immediately go to our next boss our second bout against the Shadow Sirens. The way I chose to do this fight requires a decent bit of luck, and I did not do it first try. To easily beat this fight, I have to successfully put at least two of the Sirens to sleep on my first turn, with one of them being Beldum. 
This is because Beldum can hit us with some incredibly powerful debuffs, and also can buff Marilyn with the double action buff. On my third attempt, I finally put Dupless and Beldum to sleep, and begin setting up for a clean sweep. I powerlift Amsa and then swap him out to dodge Marilyn's clap. I swap him back in and ground pound Marilyn for two turns, dealing 78 damage, and then finish her off with a spin jump from Mario. We move on to Beldum, who is about to wake up, and begin ground pounding her. Beldum tries to fight back with a blizzard, but thankfully Mario doesn't get frozen, and with one more egg toss from Amsa, I finish off Beldum and move on to Dupless. For some reason, my modifications to the game didn't double Dupless's health in specifically this fight, but he was already weak as it was, so this is just the nail in the coffin. With one more ground pound, we destroy Dupless. Finishing the fight, we heal up and immediately run to fight number three. Grotus has 100 HP and a multitude of spells that pierce defense and deal some pretty hefty damage. He starts the fight with 4 Grotus X's and gains 2 at the end of each of his turns. Each X gives him 1 defense, with 4 making him completely invulnerable to damage. I start the fight as usual, buffing Amsa and then swapping to Vivian. I use her fiery jinx to blast away the X's and manage to superguard Grotus' lightning attack. At this point, it's already over for Grotus. I pull Amsa back out and begin the stampede. This attack hits both Grotus and his two X's, dealing 27 damage to each of them. Grotus tries to fight back with a flame wave, but he doesn't stand a chance against my onslaught of Yoshis. I use Sweet Treat every turn to keep my FP topped up for Amsa, since his stampede is just so expensive. The stage becomes foggy, and Amsa actually misses his next stampede, which does worry me a little bit, but honestly I've still got this. Grotus freezes Flurry, causing me to miss out on Amsa's next turn as well, so I instead use an Earth Tremor to defeat the X's and get scarily close to death. With one more Stampede, I leave Grotus at 13 health, and decide that healing Mario with an Ultra Shroom is probably my best play. Uh oh. I misclicked it onto my full health Bobbery. After seeing my mistake, Grotus decides to use his only non-damaging move, Time Stop. This attack is similar to our clock out and has a chance to stun me and would immediately mean the end of me. Oh my gosh, I forgot I had that badge. Before this fight, I had two extra badge slots, so I decided to just equip the pretty lucky badge. This badge gives you a 10% chance to dodge attacks and is generally thought to be below average. But it just saved my life. With Lady Luck smiling down on me, I swap to Goombella to quickly heal with a sweet treat, and then finish the fight with a good old ground pound. You might be wondering why I felt the need to heal, but if you've ever played this game, you know exactly why. Because this isn't the only fight we have right now. This battle is a two for one deal, with Bowser coming immediately after. I expected this fight to be incredibly easy, but it turned out to be the most stressful battle of the entire game. I start the battle by knocking Kami out of the air with Goombella, and then heal a little bit more from our last battle. I super guard Bowser's breath attack and take a hit from Kami, putting me into kill range if both of them decide to attack me next turn. Amsa uses his mini egg to try to reduce Bowser and Kami's attack but I only managed to shrink Kami. Thankfully, both Bowser and Kami decide to not attack Mario, and with this opportunity, I actually shrink them with another mini egg, and begin focusing on Kami. I use Sweet Treat to heal Mario and cure Bobbery's poison, and barely survive another turn by super guarding Bowser while still getting hit by Kami. I pull out Amsa and use his Stampede to deal some heavy damage to both Bowser and Kami, but then the unthinkable happens. A random stage effect that freezes both sides of the battle. Thankfully, even though I got frozen, it was also able to freeze both Bowser and Kami, even with their high resistance to freeze. But not so thankfully, because this happened at the end of my turn, Bowser and Kami free themselves first, and with me being frozen, I cannot block their attacks. Bowser jumps on Amsa, killing him and forcing my only life shroom to be used. This item automatically heals a fallen party member back to 10 HP once. Lady Luck continues to stress me out, but keeps me alive by having Kami attack Amsa, leaving him at 1 HP. You would think that we could continue our onslaught, but Bowser's ground pound causes the target to lose the ability to attack, so we have to switch to plan B. I swap to Goombella in order to rally wink Mario, 
then heal myself in an ultra shroom and find out that Kami is the one exception to flying enemies still falling when not taking damage from a jump attack. I survive another turn of attacks and switch into Goombella, the only partner strong enough to help me. Bowser does another breath attack, but I manage to super guard it again. Kami heals herself for 8 HP and then the unthinkable happens. A random stage effect that freezes both sides of the battle. But with this possibility fresh on my mind, I actually guard it, blocking the freeze effect. I use another rally wink and use my last healing item to steal 5 health from Kami. Running low on options, I attempt to stun Bowser with a clock out and actually manage to break through both his and Kami's high resistance to it. With a few turns to catch my breath, I begin preparing with a power lift. With this buff, Goombella gets Kami down to 6 HP, and then Mario finally finishes her off with a spin jump. This fight just got way more manageable. Bowser shakes off his stun, so I try to stun him again, but fail. I decide to stop trying and just start bonking away with the smallest multibonks we have seen in this entire playthrough. I decided to see if I could get Amsa to shake off the disable on his attacks by keeping him out for a turn but he dies immediately. With very few options left, I swap into Flurry and use her ability Dodgy Fog, which makes Mario have a chance to dodge attacks. Bowser gets another breath attack off and my pretty lucky badge procs again, keeping me alive for yet another turn. I continue bonking with Goombella and attempt to use my stopwatch to stun Bowser, but it also fails. I super guard another breath attack and then bonk him again, followed by one of the worst sweet treats of my life, which didn't heal Flurry enough to survive one of Bowser's ground pounds. Running even lower on options, I realize that another sweet treat won't heal me enough to stay out of kill range, so I appeal to gain some more star points and manage to super guard another ground pound. I bonk, appeal, and switch into Koops. He gets down to 1 HP. But on his last stand, I have him use Shell Shield to give Mario at least one more turn of safety. I heal up again and manage to super guard another attack. Goombella continues to bonk, and I attempt to get a better buff but only manage to get the same buff of plus two. I bonk again, lose Koops to another miss super guard, and am again in kill range with no way to escape it. I attempt another clock out and it fails again, but I successfully guard the following ground pound. I multibonk one more time and follow it with my shooting star item to put Bowser down to 8 HP. I just have to survive one more attack. I see he's going in for another fire breath and I hit the B button. And I super guard it. With that, I multibonk one more time with Goombella, ending the most surprisingly stressful fight of this entire challenge. I went into that fight expecting to mop the floor with Bowser, but coming out of it, I genuinely can't believe that I survived through everything that happened. I played out of my mind. Realizing that I am not prepared for the final boss, I make a quick trip back to Rogueport to stock up on life shrooms, upgrade my partners one last time, and purchase the best badge in the game. After our preparations, I re-entered the Thousand Year Door run through the Palace of Shadows once again, and reach the final boss of the game. This is the Shadow Queen, a 1000 year old demon that has possessed Princess Peach and has plunged the world into darkness, causing despair around the world. And we are the only ones who can stop her. The Shadow Queen's first three turns are always the exact same. She smites the front party member, raises her attack and defense, and then pulls one of the two active members into the shadows, dealing massive damage. With this knowledge, I buff Goombella and then put her away until next turn. Mario gets hit by the smite, and then I bring Peril Goombella back out to deal a massive 51 damage multi-bonk. The Shadow Queen's defense gets buffed by 3, so my next bonk only does 35 damage. I heal up with a sweet feast and then get pulled into the shadows, losing 27 of my 30 health. I pull out Koops and have him protect Mario with a shell shield to block her next attack. And thankfully, Koops actually takes the next hit, meaning I save the shield for later. Goombella does another 51 damage and I heal up a bit more. She then smites my partner again instead of Mario, leaving the shield up for yet another turn. 
We bonk her one more time, leaving her at 94 HP. This fight has three phases, and her second phase starts when she reaches 90 health. In phase two, she assumes her true form, becoming incredibly powerful. She attacks three times, once with each hand and once with an attack from her main body. She is also completely invulnerable to damage. To get through phase two, you have to damage her on three separate turns, with every successful turn being shown off with a dialogue box. But if you remember, I haven't actually gotten her to phase two yet. That's because we're completely skipping it. Bobbery has the attack Bomb Squad, in which he throws out some mini bombs and all of them will explode two turns after the first set was thrown. I use this move for two turns, setting up six mini bombs in two groups of three. I then use Earth Tremor to make her enter phase two. The reason for all this setup is that Bomb Squad has an interesting property. The bombs explode on their own turn, separate from Mario and the Queen. From what I can tell, the game doesn't quite know what to do with that, and so if you group the bombs up like this, one group will explode, triggering her first of three dialogue boxes. Immediately after, the second group goes off, triggering the second of the three dialogues. And since her phase two always begins with our turn, we can immediately attack her one last time, triggering the final dialogue box and leading us into the climax of the game. All of our friends and allies that we've made throughout the game give us their support, and with the power of friendship, we break through the Shadow Queen's invulnerability, giving Peach enough freedom to give us the last of her energy, completely restoring our health and sacrificing herself in the process. We are not going to let her sacrifice go to waste, and so we get ready for the final battle, to win back the world. This heal from Peach was incredibly helpful, but it does pose one problem. Goombella just got out of peril, so we have to get her back there. I power lift to make sure Mario stays alive and get the biggest power lift I've ever gotten, getting a plus three attack and plus four defense. I start attacking with our weakened Goombella, doing as much damage as I possibly can right now. On the Shadow Queen's turn, I let her kill Goombella so that she revives with 10 HP using a Life Shroom. I then use Sweet Treat to heal her up to 15 HP, which is one more health than the Shadow Queen's attacks deal. On the next turn, I let the Shadow Queen attack her one time, putting her back into peril and giving us back our powerhouse. The Shadow Queen begins charging for her Shadow Wave, which is her strongest attack and is very similar to Gloomtail's Mega Breath. But just like with the Mega Breath, we can use Vivian to dodge it every single time. I have Vivian pull us into the shadows to fully dodge the attack, and after coming back up, I attempt to clock out the Shadow Queen. It doesn't work, but it can, so I'm gonna keep trying. I take a couple hits and then powerlift Goombella again in preparation for the rest of the fight. The Shadow Queen starts charging up for another Shadow Wave, so I have to Veil to dodge it again, and then I immediately have to Veil again because she charges up for another. I dodge it and take another shot at trying to clock out the Queen, but it doesn't work again, and she kills Mario using up another one of my Life Shrooms. The Queen keeps up her onslaught, causing me to lose another Life Shroom and leaving me with no other option than to try to stun her again. And it worked! Both her and her hands got stunned for two turns, so I used this opportunity to deal over 150 damage with Goombella over the next three turns. She breaks free of her stun and combos Mario again, using up another one of our Life Shrooms. But with four Life Shrooms left, I think we've got it. Goombella uses another multi bonk, and the Queen takes out Mario one more time. But with 35 health, the Queen is one attack from death. But I decide to flex on her a little bit. I multi-bonk with Goombella and spin jump with Mario to leave her at 3 HP, and I swap to the only partner that hasn't had a use for the entire game. I buff Miss Mouse and tell her to attack, and so she runs over, slaps the Shadow Queen, and puts her back in the grave. With the Shadow Queen defeated, Princess Peach falls to the floor, and unsure if she's alive, we run over and find out she's perfectly okay. With this happy ending, we return to Rogueport, bid our farewells to the party we've grown so close to, and ride off into the sunset, never to see them again. Well, that's not entirely true. We'll save that for the next video. Hey, thanks for watching! If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps me know if I'm making enjoyable content. And feel free to leave a comment on what kind of challenges you'd like to see my take on.
Anyway, I've got a few videos that I need to go work on, so I'll see you guys next time.